I'd like to talk about Robocop. Briefly about the film and then about the games which followed, because Robocop had a huge influence on my adolescent the youth. Public trust, protect the innocent, uphold the law. Now, being an 18 certified film, this may sound a little crazy, but this was the 80s, and therefore to not watch a film underage would have been a betrayal of the time. Robocop. Besides, look at all the toys which followed. They expected kids to be knee deep in this shit. Rapid repeat cap firing. That should hold you. Observed from a high level, Robocop is simply a raw action film. Many people still write it off as that, but it has so many layers of complexity that it's really like watching several films in one. And for me, one of the best feature films ever made. I'd buy that for a dollar. Especially the uncut version that changes the feel of the film significantly. Whoever thought it was a good idea to create a 12 Holy certified Christ. reboot was a complete buffoon. Holy Christ, there's nothing left. Because Under That Veneer of Action is a truly visceral and deep film with an incredibly clever and tense storyline. It's also littered with satire, parodies and quips on real life, which adds yet another dimension to this complex cocktail of emotional excitement. That's it, Buster. No more military aid. <laughs> At its heart, we have a young cop, new to the police department, who wants to kick some ass. Obviously, he decides to kick the wrong ass and suffers the ultimate consequence, except he's brought back from the brink of death, only to merge with machine and become neither one or the other, what we'd call a cyborg. This was a concept I was already quite fascinated with thanks to this poster of the Spectrum game Cyborg, which sadly never materialised in finished form. So caught up in this, not only do we have moral implications where death migrates to a different kind of permanence, but we get down to a dark visceral dimension of merging something we consider to have a soul, a living, breathing, emotional human with something cold, mechanical and unchanging. These notions alone used to keep me awake at night. I mean, how would it feel? What does it mean to the concept of being alive? Is this cyborg the same person, or has the programming seeping into his mind made him something new entirely? That concept and these questions bugged me all through the film, and lay at the core of the action as you witness this new creation slowly come to terms with what he is, before finally connecting to what he was before. Remembering that although he's Robocop, he was, and indeed still is, Alex Murphy. On top of this deep concept is a very clear view of right and wrong, of justice and injustice, your typical cops and robbers affair, and Murphy's view of that, although sculpted throughout the film, remains unwavering. Yes, I am a cop. Watching the film was intense and emotional, and I was left needing something more to appease my thoughts and these feelings. I wanted to get an idea of what it felt to be Robocop. Robocop! It's the Robo Helmet and Ultra Blaster! Drop it. And that plastic helmet didn't quite cut it. And so these subsequent video games of the time came to my rescue. I'll start with the arcade experience. The foreign setting of the arcade cabinet, deep in the arcade and away from the safety of home, combined with its impressive visuals, felt more connected to the film than anything else at the time. The attract mode, depicting key elements of the story, combined with the cold, harsh serving of the title screen, managed to instigate those visceral feelings of the film perfectly. Of course, without the robotic surreal music adapted from the movie, then this experience would have been far less intense. But as we'll discover, the music of the games, much like the film, is an essential part of recreating that almost <laughs> operatic feeling of Robocop. Of course, for the casual player, the arcade game is a tough cookie, and the levels don't seem to bear a strong connection to the film plot. We get to wander through the streets, smashing thugs and motorcycles, before having a brief confrontation with a huge ED-209, and this is largely how play continues. You might think that the lack of cohesion to the original story would be a negative, but it worked well. It was giving me something extra on top of the movie experience, and after all, that's exactly what I had hoped for. Of course, I wanted to bring this experience into my home, and thankfully Ocean Software had served up the goods with their own take on the 8-bit home micros. 
Seeing that mesmerising iconic art on loading was something special, but even more special was the title screen music. I would load this game up simply to listen to that music. In fact, I probably spent more time listening to that music than playing the actual game. It just seemed to fit so well. Composed by Jonathan Dunn, it aligned with the story of the film, the transformation from man to machine and back to man again. It almost brought a tear to my eye. Now, the game itself was incredibly good because, believe it or not, not all film tie-ins were pieces of unrelenting crud back then. The Ocean Games stuck to the film much more faithfully than Data East's arcade cabinet and followed the well-loved Ocean format of a platformer sprinkled with mini-games capturing key points of the movie. It's a really well thought out package and although it fares better on some formats than others, it mostly still manages to bring the film atmosphere directly into your living room. Apart from the Commodore 64 version that was so bugged upon release that you can't actually complete it. Now as the early 90s panned out, this desire to play Robocop games didn't go away, and playing Robocop on my mate's Atari ST was another moment of epiphany. But this time, having had a year or so to get over the trauma of the film, I was more concerned with the graphics. To my 10 or 11 year old eye, they looked almost identical to the arcade machine. Now clearly a side by side comparison nowadays shows us otherwise, but having come from a Spectrum to the ST, the difference was staggering. Of course during those years the second movie came and went, and although it was a reasonable attempt, it was half the film of the original. Nothing more. Still, it managed to conjure the same feelings of disconnected dread from the first, with Kane now taking the place of the main robot, in a suit which resembled even less of a man. Here we simply had a brain trapped inside a metal can, with a screen seemingly its only human-like contact outside of that cold steel structure. The second movie, despite its flaws, reignited my need to engage in the Robocop universe, and just like before, I went to the arcades. Now Robocop 2's arcade experience is a very different kettle of fish from the first. It's another outing by Data East, but this time the experience is much more action orientated, like beat em ups emerging at the time. Being a big fan of Final Fight, this was actually exactly what I was hoping for, especially being able to share the action with a friend. My brother and I would often try and battle through these levels, blasting whatever was in sight. Again, connection to the film script is tenuous but enjoyable, and just like the first, home ports would follow. I remember that my only experience at home this time around was from a Spectrum cover tape, and the demo was pretty hard. I was also a bit older and potentially short on cash, so my enthusiasm for the game petered out and I neglected to play the full version until recently. Of course, back in the movies, Robocop 3 came and thankfully went again, and although the game for the likes of the Amiga and Atari ST is incredible, it's one which completely passed me by. Maybe I was still in denial about how atrocious the film was. Which is a shame because it gives you the film we wanted, but in game form essentially. It would take a new and exciting title to reinvigorate my senses, and that title would come in the form of Robocop vs Terminator on the Sega Mega Drive. But these are titles I'll be exploring another time. Despite my interest in Robocop not diminishing, at the time these latter games didn't connect with the original films for me, and are thus unnecessary to this monologue. I'm not sure if the interest I hold stems from watching the film when I was young, or whether it would occur watching it afresh today. I mean, at its core, the original film is asking really what it is to be alive, and this concept indulges a very deep thirst, or maybe fear, which I'm sure others share. And I think that's why the original film and the moody, atmospheric games which followed were so captivating. It's a similar story with the Alien films and even to a certain extent, the Matrix franchise. I hear that. I often hear the question, is the game 
better than the movie, but it's a question I've always found a strange one. A game is a very different medium to a movie, and although you can enjoy one more than the other, they trigger different feelings and pander to different areas of your psyche. What the Robocop games brought to the film franchise, especially with the original, was a sense of completion. I don't think I would have felt satisfied watching the movie without a decent and engrossing interactive experience to follow it up with. Something to really trigger the imagination and enjoy with other people perhaps talk about. These games allowed me to explore a universe which I found captivating and scratch an itch which needed scratching. And it saddens me deeply when game adaptations of other great films are just flushed down the pan, because it not only leaves a sour taste in your mouth, but it also takes something away from the film experience. Any imagination or suspension of disbelief you may have held to enjoy the film is snapped back to gritty reality, when a crappy film tie-in slaps its cash-grabbing hands around your face, presented devoid of love or passion for the cause. But Robocop was a movie and game experience which felt complete, and wherever that beautiful combination occurs, it's bloody amazing. For the most part anyway, there are of course exceptions to this rule. So stay tuned for more memories from youth, more Robocop and indeed added Terminator, and I'll be back. Nice shooting, son. What's your name? It's Dwayne. Thanks for watching. There's some more videos here. You can subscribe, contribute to my Patreon to help the channel and get rewards or leave or give it a thumbs up or, or down. It all helps. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great evening.